everybody. Welcome to Boggling Conversations, Season 2, Episode 2. As usual, I have a surprise for you. I believe other eminent people abide our questions. But Dr. Aparajita Hazra is not subject to our doubts and questions because she remains as elusive as the highest pinnacle of knowledge. And her grandeur can only be seen by scholars and critics. Probably she's like the loftiest hill, revealing her grandeur to the stars and to the sunbeams. And this majesty of lofty hills, its sublime heights are invisible to us. We can see only the cloudy border of its base and not the sublime heights. So to sound the depth of this great lady is a fruitless attempt. It baffles all analysis and understanding. What Shakespeare said of Cleopatra may safely be applied to her. Age cannot wither her, nor can custom stale her infinite variety. Apra, Dr. Aparajita Hazra, the dean of West Bengal University. She's from West Bengal. She's an erudite scholar. She's an accomplished persona, and she's also an author. So Aparajita, welcome to Boggling Conversations. How have you been? Thank you very much, Purnima. First of all, I need to uh, thank you for those high-flown <laughs> adjectives. I really don't know how much of that I deserve, but yes, <laughs> it's really good to be compared to Cleopatra and all that. My goodness, what what adjectives have you packed into so little <laughs> time? But yes, I'll try to live up to your expectations as much as possible. I've been well, and the pandemic, of course, uh, has affected all of us. Otherwise, we would have been sitting uh, face, face to face, face. Today. Yes. yes, talking. Uh, but distance is out. not a constraint anymore, Aprajita, it's because not. I think it's with not. BCT, with virtual classroom technology, Absolutely. we have shifted Absolutely. to the online mode of teaching. I know it is monotonous. It gets a little, you know, stagnating at times. It is restricting, but what can't be cured has to be endured with a smile. Endured, and we yeah. teachers are, you know, coping with the pandemic and dealing with the situation and, you know, keeping our, you know, chins up. <laughs> Above the waters. We have yes. to. We I have, have, to. A, I have a little to. surprise for you. Yes, I just remembered him and Kumar's, you know, mellifluous song, you know, because when I um, when I think of West Bengal, I think of Liman Kumar, I think of Salil Chaudhary, I think of all Rabindranath Tagore and uh, Bengali sweets. And I guess, Aprajita, you have some excellent culinary skills. I must tell the yes. viewers, I'm sure your students are would be enjoying this show and they must be, you know, see, watching your Facebook updates. You know, apart from being an erudite scholar, you're such an excellent cook. So how do you manage everything? Uh, managing everything is, yes, uh, one uh, big uh, job, I must say. And, uh, you know, that needed some doing. I mean, I have, like you said, I have written and uh, published quite a lot. I have lectured extensively, oh, done oh. conferences abroad. Yes. At the same time, brought up my daughter almost single-handedly because, you know, her studies, cooking for her, like you said just now, that's probably what taught me to be uh, a good cook. I don't know whether I'm a good cook, but I definitely <laughs> do have some culinary skills, I can tell you that. So <laughs> learning to cook for her, taking her to school, her swimming classes, her music lessons, you know. My uh, daughter is a, a quite a marvel with her piano. She has been through with flying colors in the Trinity School of Guild, uh, Trinity Guildhall School of Music. So her Correct. tuitions, everything had to be done, you know, and that did uh, take some amount of um, time management. And I yes. think we women are uh, multitasking management <laughs> gurus. Yes. yes. So we can do it all. So maybe I have done it all the same way. Lovely, lovely. 
I, and, and Aprajita, I must tell the viewers mm -hmm. that, you know, you've been an amazing wife and an amazing mother. You had, uh, you know, you have a successful marriage and your husband has always been a wealth of encouragement and support. So do you think it's important for a working woman? Because, you know, you could attend all the conferences and everything, you know, because of his support. You know, what what is your opinion about it? Do you play the feminist card or you give him, you know, his due credit? <laughs> uh. You know, <laughs> now, you put me in the now the problem is that, you know, every time a woman gets asked this question, Purnima, I always wonder whether it was a man in her position. Had it been a man in her position, would he be uh, asked the same question, you know? Correct. Because uh, it's about a woman and uh, pursuing her careers, you know, pursuing her dreams. It's like... Uh, something not to be done and that is why if it is done then it comes through as very unusual and as for a, a great career and a successful marriage uh, well those are enormously loaded adjectives I must say right well um, let me see yes successful career yes I always wanted to be teaching in a university and I've reached there I have been the head of the department for a long time I have served my term as dean of arts and yes. yes, I have uh, been blessed enough to have a whole gang of students, you know, who have respected and loved me to distraction. Yes, you could say that I have had a good career. And Shubhashish, my husband too, uh, you know, he never stood in the way of my career. He's been Correct. very encouraging when it came to getting myself published or giving talks in seminars. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been times when I redoubted myself, you know, but he has a lot of faith in my academic abilities. A little yes. uh, too much faith, I guess. Uh, ah. <laughs> and as far as marriage is concerned, I feel gone are those days when the husband used to be the leader of the pack, you know, the alpha male. Yeah. And yeah. I feel nowadays marriage is more about companionship. And yes. uh, as far as our marriage is concerned, I have always um, believed in giving space, you know. Yes. Each partner should have his or her own space to breathe Correct. in. You cannot and should not uh, breathe down each other's neck. Now, absolutely, my husband you're absolutely is managing, right. Absolutely. And my husband is a managing director of a huge multinational. Now, I too have had my share of academic and administrative accolades. So both of us are very strong-willed people. We do yes. our own thing. We solve our own problems. We take our own decisions. We need Viewers, our decisions. are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> Viewers, so we need I, our I, I guess, yes. You know, Husband and wife friendship. should be complimentary to each other. Yes, Absolutely. and that's what Aparajita we, said. You know what we 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 are very careful about not stepping on each other's toes. At least yes. I am. Yes. Or yes. else we would be at loggerheads all the time because we yes. both have our careers, be it a man or a woman. So to say that woman should be thankful just because she has been allowed to pursue her dreams is a travesty of feminism. Yeah, yeah there's a travesty of feminism. Right. You said it. You you nailed yes. it, Aprajita. You nailed it. Because yeah, what happens because is right. books like books like you know men are from Mars and women are from Venus have uh, you know stereotype things, and I think it's high time that mm -hmm. we break that cliche and stereotype mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and and break those gender barriers. And uh, yes, you're absolutely right. You know, we should not encroach upon each other's space. And that's the secret of a happy marriage, a happy or I successful so, yes. marriage, whatever we. Uh, Aprajita, <laughs> you are yes. quite a globe trotter. And uh, is there any country that you've spared? Because I've seen your pictures um, <laughs> in all the seven continents, I believe. You've been yes, such so. a globe trotter. So which country has actually left an indelible impression on your mind? <laughs> uh, there have been, yes, places. I think uh, Scotland has been one of my favorite places, you know. I think, Mine too, you know, yeah. And, yeah. and New Zealand too. New Zealand, uh, I had been to the University of Auckland over there. And uh, then uh, there was Georgia, the, the yes. one beside Russia, not the one in USA, the one beside okay, Russia. Okay, I got it, I yeah. got it. Yeah, so it was a place which was brimming with history and tradition, you know. It's very hard to choose. Canada was also great. Ryerson University was the place where I had mm -hmm. my talk. 
and um one a fun thing that i would like to share with you is that yes. every time i have had a conference in different countries you know uh, me and my husband we made it a point to turn each of my academic tours into a family trip as well you know so Lovely. once the, yeah so once the lectures <laughs> and the academic conferences are over we uh, embark upon our family time so we normally hire a car from the rentals you know you have those car rentals and then mm -hmm. we just cruise around in leisurely happiness soaking in the ways of the place tasting wow. life out there for a while you know so we did that when you i was so in romantic. canada as well. yeah we went to the <laughs> grand canyon can you believe that that was a dream Ooh. trip up on a yeah. helicopter so that was great so that was good so that probably and, and left an indelible impression you remember in that, uh, now that you yeah now that you're talking about uh, leaving an impression uh, i should have mentioned this earlier i made a trip to howard parsonage you know i have done my phd on the brontes now uh -huh. i went to howard parsonage in yorkshire when i was in london and uh, uh -huh. the parsonage is of course a museum now and but okay. standing in the house of the brontes looking at the things they used you know visualizing contextualizing all that i have read about them in the letters their books it was just like being in a time capsule you know amazing goosebumps so for a amazing. while for a while you were actually in a feeling jane air and wuthering heights Absolutely. and charlotte and Absolutely. professor and what not you must be that was, that was very true that was very true totally and it was like it. a time warp you know i was just stuck there i was just and yeah 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 lovely Thank lovely you. and it's you know traveling can be a stress buster and i think covid is also changing all the you know traveling norms and we are having plenty of webinars but we mm. do miss attending conferences and seminars abroad you're absolutely right with which uh, well seminars and conferences uh, could be an intellectual treat uh, if treated well uh, do you mm. think people um, attend seminars and conferences only for api scores and certificate and how many of them present papers for passion uh, i mean this is boggling conversation so the questions are going to be boggling <laughs> <laughs> so what what is your opinion about it Abraham? i can understand that now uh, you know the problem is um, the first part of your question is very very naughty uh, punima <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yes uh, teachers you know especially the young ones the ones uh, not the uh, ones like me who have no more promotions <laughs> due so we uh, you know we don't need any api anymore but the yes. young ones who still have a long line of promotions lined up they do have an eye peeled for api scores you can't blame them for it you know and when mm. someone writes something uh, in the form of an academic article there has to be a degree of passion involved i would say absolutely but, yeah but having said that i have come across articles you know that are just mm -hmm. one page long and some mm -hmm. like schoolboy essays too but i think those <laughs> yes. writers those writers yeah. are a very rare species you know so uh, yes the yes most of yes you have been involved yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> but it's a part and parcel of you know like being a, a professor it's a part and parcel of a professor's life <laughs> yes 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 or a lecturer's life because professor doesn't need api scores anymore because uh, well there is a terminology called you know assistant professor and associate professor but yes. even assistant professor you know there was a time when he would uh, even i would end up calling myself a professor because i was an assistant professor so this is what happens but then you have an axe to grind in order to mm -hmm. you know reach that position yes you you're, you're absolutely right a lot of passion is required a lot of hard work it's not just about you know writing you know school a boy essay and getting away with it the problem yes. is purnima the problem is uh, as an academic one thing that is very disheartening for me is that uh, since we have the ugc care journals uh -huh. and all that there are a number of journals you know um which do publish uh, articles which are not very standard and then again you have journals which publish very standard uh, articles i have published a lot in journals like that you know where you have to go through triple blind peer review and yes. uh, they come out from outside but uh, regrettably when you look at the ugc care list those journals are not there 
so you know even yes. though i have a lot of uh, write ups in journals like that i cannot i could not you know as long as my promotions were due i could not really claim any api for that so i had to claim yes. api for the ones that so that is yes. it and the mushrooming of journals is something that needs to be taken with a pinch of salt i think as a responsible academician yes absolutely um, a project that you've written prolifically i think you've authored four books you're working on a book on christopher marlow right. now because you, you you write for penguin you write for all you know a grade uh, publishers and they also commission uh, their books so um a project how do you manage that how did you start your career as an author uh um starting my career uh, as an author author i think i always wanted to write you know i always wanted okay. to write i was just uh, waiting uh, for the opportune time to start something because if you are writing a book then you need to have that amount of peace of mind you need to be a little bit of yes. settle down in your career so uh, i was waiting for that and i remember that 2012 or 2013 was the first time that i brought my first book out and that still remains my favorite book among the books that i have authored and that was on the gothic and um, gothic just, uh, uh, you mean castle of otranto mysteries of your dolphin yes, yes. you know yes gothic something now. that started yeah. with that something that started okay. with that and though i have yeah. a lot of uh, things to say uh, about that because i have specialized in the gothic and the yes. other day i was uh, talking to one of my friends abroad and i was saying that you know when we talk about the gothic we start by talking uh, about horace walpole's castle of otranto like you just did and yeah. uh, but that is the western part of the world and the gothic as yes. the western part of the world understands it but if you look at our own tradition in 300 ce you know like uh, 300 common era there was this man called bharat he was writing the natya shastra i was just yes. uh, today itself i was talking about this in class you know when i was teaching my students and he Correct. has written about the navaras and two of those oh. rasas you know those are vivatsaras which you can very well call the horror Uh, the 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 feeling of horror and there is the other is the bhayanak ras which is terror uh, and then terror. you know when we only talk about horror and terror and the differences when david panta talks about it but bharat has been talking about it long long back ago in india and we never really uh, looked towards that and anyway, yes that is uh, yes. that is another uh, part about the gothic coming back to your question you know so uh, what has happened is that you know writing probably is kind of like breathing to me if i don't write mm. i would feel that i am finished so in order to keep uh, you know you were just talking about keeping our chin above water that is yes. how i do it you know so unless i write unless i do webinars unless i doing webinars is a, an adrenaline rush for me because ah. that inspires me to study <laughs> You it's know, like a motorcycle it. race for you <laughs> it's exactly like that yeah absolutely so yeah. yes that needs some doing because i have been doing it all my life and i like i was telling you a little while ago that i had my daughter to bring up you know um mm -hmm. so i had uh, a lot of cooking to do taking her to tuitions taking her to her swimming classes music lessons it's taken a lot of time management here yeah? and uh, there have been times when you know i have been writing um because i started studying at 12 o'clock or midnight you know and i mm. would study up to uh, saying up uh, until 3 o'clock in the morning and uh, that there were times that i have been doing that but it's been good it's uh, like i just said that it's, it's been an satisfying yes it's been satisfying yes it's been satisfying yes yes, yes. lovely so uh, aprajita when we teach literature and when we teach history of literature especially we teach you know anglo saxon age and middle age and elizabethan age and romantic age and victorian age modern post modern which is your favorite era in literature which is your favorite era um i think the era of enlightenment you know aha uh -huh. uh, because right. what i feel is uh unless that dictum of cogito ergo mm -hmm. sum you know like uh, what descartes had uh, talked about unless that had stuck i think a lot of movements that happened later would not yes. have happened at all teaching Correct. and training the human mind to think is very important purnima i think so uh yes. you know uh, if you remember hannah arendt once uh, while uh, speaking 
about the intricate interface uh, between knowing and thinking she talks about how thinking links the you know what she calls a vita activa or the active yes. life uh, yes. and the vita contemplativa that is the contemplative mind so yes. thinking is very important and i think the age of enlightenment taught you to do that you know so age a lot of, of movement enlightenment yes so I that uh, actually you know coaxes you that that cajoles you to you know like go even further it is so penetrating mm. and it is so important because without yes. enlightenment nothing is possible so that's your True. favorite era you um, whenever we have spoken you know at conferences you know we've spoken about shakespeare and that's how i started this talk as well and i think you're quite passionate about you know shakespeare and tragedies comedies yeah. tragic comedies everything which is your favorite uh, shakespeare and play up Rajita, I think our viewers would like to know, and I'm sure your students would like to know well, that. Too. I think if you really ask me, I would say Macbeth. I know it sounds cliché. Uh, uh, okay. Everybody says Macbeth, but I have my own reasons, you know. And of obviously, the one reason is uh, the more ambitious we are getting in life, you know, the yeah, more yeah, yeah. things like Macbeth are becoming. But yes. what I uh, love in the character, in the in the entire cast of macbeth is the role of lady macbeth you know because everybody loves to berate her everybody calls her the four but four she's the perfect wife to macbeth perfect yes <laughs> and i think you know she was torn between what her heart wanted and what her head which was obviously mm. conditioned by the performative roles you know remembering yes. judith butler the performative roles expected but from her by a very patriarchal society and that mm. uh, obviously i think resulted in the trauma that uh, yeah. kills her at the end so yes, i the think the somnambulism of lady macbeth yeah 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 yes so i think she's a very complex character and a character that um, you can yes relate to so I think uh, so. That's like Macbeth. Macbeth. Okay, I would say King Lear, but you know, for you, it is Macbeth. And you know, you're absolutely right because the play is so relatable. We are getting yes. over ambitious, and I believe you know we just lost uh, you know Irfan Khan, and he acted in Macbul, which was such a beautiful yes. adaptation yes. of uh, Shakespeare's uh, Macbeth. So mm -hmm. Aparajita, you know, Vishal Bharadwaj has done a phenomenal job with Shakespeare. I mean, he's adapted it so beautifully to suit the requirement of you know. indian uh, taste indian audience and uh, he adapted um, uh, omkara uh, was mm. an adaptation of othello and the uh, makbul was an adaptation of uh, okay. you know, shakespeare's macbeth so what is your personal opinion about vishal bharadwaj as a director uh i'm not a very movie person but you know whenever there's a movie being made from a book uh, it yes. entails uh, something called representation and yes. uh, that in turn allows the sneaky possibility of the politics of representation to creep in so uh, there True. can always be a lot of translation a lot of adaptation tradaptation you know uh, yes, going yes. on and as a director i think uh, vishal bharadwaj has uh, he had to take a thousand and one things into consideration now uh, if oh, you yes. really look at the indian uh, socio politico religious collective unconscious that has to be kept in mind when he is making a movie and on mm. top of that you need to keep the coins jingling at the box office as well now yes, you yes. To, yes so you need to dodge in some amount of nacha gana as well you know because yes. very cleverly very quietly but uh, to cater to a sundry audience you know you need to do that as well so, so you need bhi jalaile and stuff you know in order yes, to yes. spice that up is in order to spice you know up those things. item numbers and things now that yeah. part of the audience you know uh, uh, who are uh, waiting for uh, item numbers and dances and and that kind of thing they are there uh, just to have some good time you know but that is also they are also a very important part of the box office you know so um, you know it's very important to take them into consideration as well and she experienced himself time. did that and she experienced yes, himself did that with the groundlings you know he also yes. you know worked on the <laughs> the groundlings the pits <laughs> the penny stinkers the penny stinkers yeah, yeah, because yeah. they would just pay one penny and go there and they would you know have the wolf whistles and the guffaws of laughter and all that so <laughs> yes. also had to look look after that 
but i think yeah. as a director you know he has to cater to uh, both kinds of people in script and judging by that he i think he did a pretty wonderful job uh, yes. again you know representation can be of different sorts as well you can have what you know we know as darstellen the outsider's mm-hmm. representation of something and yes. portrayal yeah. which is a more authentic kind of representation uh, brought forth brought forth by the insider so yeah. i uh, personally like the way vishal bhardwaj adapts the shakespearean text to suit the indian right. milieu you know he yes. it opens to up new, a whole new terrain of interpretation yes the yes signifier yes. change you know but then again yes. if that if the signifiers change then derrida would say that is what difference is all about so yes for yes jack derrida comes into the picture there yes, yes. yes. but aprajita you just mentioned you know shakespeare and hero and you mentioned lady macbeth i know you're fond of you know this uh, complex character but apart from that you know we have rosalind beatrice and you know celia and you know so many uh, shakespearean heroines who is your favorite amongst the shakespearean heroines because it is it was john ruskin who says shakespeare doesn't have any heroes he only has heroines <laughs> so who is your favorite shakespearean heroine i uh, if you really uh, talk about uh, favorites i would say cordelia you know cordelia oh, uh, can okay. yes she can't uh, mouth meaningless obsequies and she gets punished for that but she stays stubbornly happy with herself you know a lot of mm-hmm. uh, i think with i relate integrity. to her a lot i i relate to her a lot i think um another person that i relate to another character that i relate to is portia you know so she is kind of like shackled by conventions of normativity towards the beginning but then yes. she comes out of the chrysalis as a veritable strong woman with agency you know the resourceful sustainer i think mm. i relate to her character a lot uh, cordelia portia though i know there are lots of people who would probably see one of the witches in uh, of macbeth in me you know double double, double toilet trouble <laughs> oh my god don't don't <laughs> call yourself a witch <laughs> apprentice <laughs> but, but i believe you would be able to do a fantastic job on stage because drama is meant to be enacted and not just read with our students are you know not familiar with that you know we have play reading and we you, do you know what you know, i used to do in my earlier yes. university i used to teach king lear Uh, yeah. so what i would do is that after uh, teaching them the first scene you know where king lear just walks in and he the, the some uh, a servant is carrying his crown on a uh, you know uh, platter so and there's a mm-hmm. retinue behind him so i would group my students into uh, you know uh, i would just divide them into groups and i would ask them to take 10 minutes without any contact with uh, between the groups and then i would ask them to enact that uh, scene and you would Lovely. be surprised purnima to see how different their interpretations were you know so girls would interpret it differently they would interpret the characters of goneril and regal in, in, in a different way than boys would do it was very interesting to watch what the young minds think of think of shakespeare you know because it is open to multiple interpretations Absolutely. and with reader response theory i think it's so important for our students to be able to interpret the play and find it relevant even today in the 21st century 16th mm, century sounds so relevant because there's psychoanalysis there is you know feminist analysis there is so much in uh, shakespeare so much going on and yes, uh, yes. if the author is dead if rola bart is to be taken for his word yes. if the author is dead then uh, the play now belongs to us the readers and the way we interpret it uh, talks a lot about the text that we are the intertextuality that we are uh, depending on that is our societal upbringing the entire new over the entire new rubric of meaning that we read into the text you know so it's very interesting true, how true. praxis brings that out yes yes very true so aprajita you know we, we were talking about shakespeare and heroines which if you were to act in a play which play would you choose and you know which heroine or hero would you like to play lady macbeth ah <laughs> lady macbeth i would love to bring out the uh, the <laughs> complexities the inter- intricacies the cross currents of thoughts inside her 
Hello, you know, dear viewers. Here. See, so many viewers are commentating. You know, just say hi to them, Aprajita. <laughs> Hello, viewers. I hope I'm not letting you down. <laughs> no, absolutely yeah. not. He would never do that. Aprajita, you know, we yes. uh, are uh, romantics. You know, when, when it comes to literature, you know, we are idealistic. We tend to live in this utopian world. And, you know, how is, uh, you know, virtual classroom really technology treating you these days? Are you enjoying this, uh, you know, particular phase of teaching? Do you think this is the future of uh, teaching? What is your opinion as a as a prof, as a dean? Um, if you, I'm not a dean anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, I used to be the dean. But, you know, Purnima, I think there are both uh, pros as well as cons uh, to this. So if you really ask me, uh, let's do the pros first. Mm. A, you can take a, a classes at any time during the day, you know, without really having to think whether the students are going to miss their last transportation back home or, you know, I have taken classes at nine o'clock in the evening as well. So you could not have done um, that uh, unless it was a virtual classroom. So that yes. is one of the biggest uh, pros uh, that I would talk about. Then again, you don't have to travel. You save a lot of time, which yes. can be used constructively to write, to study, to research True. more, to cook, to mop, to sweep. You know, I've been doing that during the lockdown blues as well. Oh, and yes. And oh, oh, yes. Without me. <laughs> you know, I just put away my mop and then come and take a class and then go back to my sweeping and mopping and cooking. So I do that. I can do that. And then again, uh, you know, if you really look at it uh, from a very uh, eco-friendly way, you stop burning fuel. So you are ah. getting friendlier towards the earth. And uh, distance mm. is not a factor. Um, I have lectured online uh, to audiences abroad uh, from the comfort yes. of my own study. I have got uh, academicians from abroad to, uh, you know, lecture to my students in India too. Just like that in a jiffy. Uh, we are talking today, you know, you are uh, yes, in a completely different on boggling conversations. <laughs> See, we are having this, aren't we? But the cons yeah. are there as well, you know. Um, one thing that frustrates me... Um, is the is, technical glitch? <laughs> no, more than that, you know, not being able to see the students in front of me. Ah, you know, while teaching yes, in the classroom, yes. I have this habit of keeping close eye contact, you know. That yes, 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 yes. And we are Whether staring into the camera here. Yes, yes. Yeah. Correct. Whether they are on the same page as me. Now, you know, it gives you the instant feedback. But that ha doesn't happen when you're teaching online from behind the screen. The True. human touch is lost somehow. And then, yeah. like you said, there can be... The viewers do glitches. agree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> internet glitches, connectivity issues, e issues of economic viability as well, you know, for yes. some students. Yes. Uh, because... Yes. Uh, yes. In the place that I used to teach earlier in Purulia, there, there were uh, some students who were unfortunately um, not economically very well off. So sounds, for sounds, them, having yeah. a smartphone was something like uh, next to impossible. So you can't force a child to uh, come True. over to the class, you know. True. So True. in that case, they risk missing the classes. So that is yes. something that is wrong. But then again, yeah. we need to keep looking at the bright side of things. Can't do anything about it right now, right? And I'm glad, you know, like P.B. Shelley, you know, you believe in the line, if winter comes, can spring be far behind? Be far so, behind ultimately, yes. and so ultimately, you know, we look at the positive side in order to, you know, survive. And mm -hmm. um, yes, and I think, you know, all the teachers who are into teaching, who uh, uh, for us, I, I guess it's our dominant passion. We have an avid interest uh, in teaching. So for mm -hmm. us, uh, uh, this is not a constraint. Online mode of teaching is not a constraint. You know, we just try to give in our best and try to make our lectures interesting and engaging. You're absolutely That's right. So, yes. uh, Aprajita, I think during uh, the pandemic, we had a lot of classes. We had a lot of webinars and there were some who were conducting uh, master classes on how to be a best-selling author and whatnot. So, do these classes make you a best-selling author? What is your opinion about it? Or, you know, it's just a way of uh, probably starting a career in creative writing. You know, uh, I have also seen uh, um, those ads coming up about master classes in creative writing. I mm. think uh, master classes can definitely hone your talent, but you have mm. to have your talent first. You know, that's what I believe exactly. personally. Yes. Yeah, 
personal uh, that's absolutely my personal opinion uh, no offense to anybody who's holding a master class or whatever but i think if you have a passion about writing if you really have that flair for writing then master classes can hone you by uh, hone your potential yes by uh, okay. teaching you the tips of the trade but if you All just right. are not into creative writing then i can't really just force you force your head down on a piece of paper and say now you have to write Exactly, it has to be spontaneous. Yeah, I think so. And un unless it comes from within, I don't think you know, uh, and a writer can do justice to <laughs> the the readers. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think so too. Okay. Yeah. And what is the future of books? I think people have uh, you know started listening to books. We have audio books. People listen to podcasts. So have you? Do you uh, listen to podcasts, uh, Aparajita? What is your opinion about the latest uh, uh, latest technology? Um, I wouldn't call myself a very tech savvy person, but okay. I am very much into eBooks. And Audible is there on my phone. You know, I'm forever listening to audio books when I'm driving or when I'm cooking or when I'm yeah, doing yeah, something yeah. else. So I always have this little pouch, you know, which I can tie on my arm, and uh, I can have the headphones in my ear, and I, then I do my thing and keep listening to whoever I want to listen to. And uh, as far you know, books uh, of course have their own thing, their own style. But digital media is catching up very fast. You cannot really deny it. You know, eBooks and Kindle are taking over like wildfire. Oh yes. Now I myself am an avid Kindle reader. You know, uh, okay. I carry my trusty Kindle everywhere, and you can potentially store almost five to six thousand books in an eight GB Kindle. Can you ever oh, dream yes. of carrying so many books uh, with you? You can't ever? carry a library, but this is like a pocket theater. You can just Absolutely. you know carry it Absolutely. wherever you like. Yeah. And uh, there have been times when I have been studying late into the night, you know, and I needed a book badly, you know, to uh, uh, to refer to or to study. Or so I have bought books on Kindle at two thirty in the morning and started working Ooh. on it. Oh uh, yeah, ten ten minutes later. Only e-books uh, give you that, and I love yeah. audio books. So uh, I you love audio books. Audio books. You're very much tech savvy. Then you're very much tech savvy. You know, you're very much into it. Kindle. And I love my audiobooks and I love Kindle. Yes, uh, you know, I have heard people talking about how good a new book smells. Yes, I uh, also like the smell yes. of new books. But I love the look of my Kindle, you know, when I open uh, the library on Kindle. Lovely. What an answer. So many books. Oh, that's heaven for me. So I think print media is going obsolete. And yes, we are into a uh, Kindle and we are into audiobooks. And very soon, uh, I'm, uh, Aprajita might listen to podcasts. You never know. You're I becoming do. tech savvy. One of, yeah, my yeah, friends, yeah, one of my friends, uh, Bridget Burke, you know, she had a wonderful, yes. she has a wonderful podcast called Kathonia. And I am okay. a, an avid listener to her podcast. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm one of the chiefest listeners to her podcast. And okay. uh, it's very interesting. I do listen to podcasts. Lovely. Okay, Aprajita, you hail from West Bengal. And I'm sure our, you know, viewers want me to ask, you know, one question based on Bengali literature. So mm -hmm. when it comes to regional literature, when it comes to Bengali literature, do you think, uh, you know, do you feel deprived? Or you think you're very much into it? You do read Bengali. You do read, um, uh, you know, like uh, uh, Satyajit Ray or um, uh, Sharat Chatter, Sharat Chandra Chatterjee, uh, uh, Tagore. Tagore, of course, wrote in uh, English, but then he wrote in Bengali as well. Bengali, so when it comes to, uh, there are some uh, lovely Bengali uh, writers. So who is your favorite uh, amongst them, or which is your favorite Bengali film? My first question is about your favorite Bengali book, and the second yeah. question My is My favorite Bengali the book uh, would be, you know, it's very difficult to pinpoint one because there are scores of lovely, lovely books. You know, I yes. am very much in love with the books that Mahashrita Devi writes. And then again, you know, um, Shottojit Rai, you know, when he talks about, when he writes about his, um, you know, he has serious writings as well as lighthearted Feluda writings and yes. uh, Professor Shonko. I used to be an avid reader of Shottojit Rai when I was growing up. So Shottojit Rai is very much connected to 
my growing up uh, stage. And of course, Robindranath Thakur is somebody that we swear by. So, uh, you know, we call him the Pranit Thakur. So he's nah. in our hearts. So we cannot yes. be without him. Then again, there is Bibhuti Bhushan Bandhavadhyay, Shorachandra Chattopadhyay, you know. So there are so many people, you know. So it's very difficult to pinpoint. And if you really ask about a film that really engages me even today, that is uh, the trilogy, the Opu trilogy by uh, Shakespeare, uh, by uh, Shotaji. <laughs> You know, My so, Satyajit Ray. Yeah. Ah, yes. wow. They are wow. wonderful, wonderful. They make you cry, they make you smile, they make you poignant. They play around with your emotions like anything. And the books are the books are actually Bibhuti Bhushan written by Bibhuti Bhushan Bandhavadha. He himself is a doyen. And then uh, mm. the film, you know, the book gets treated into film media by another doyen, that is Shatuit Ray. So who could beat that combination? Who yes, could beat that combination? Absolutely right. And I can't agree with you more, Prajita. So uh, I, we had a lovely conversation, but uh, in, I have a rapid fire round, so I'm not going to re release you or liberate you so soon. <laughs> so this <laughs> rapid fire round uh, is, uh, you know, is something that, you know, my guests look forward to, and I'm sure you would enjoy uh, answering my questions. So well, Prajita, if you were to... <laughs> if you were to write under a pseudonym, what would that be? The Phoenix. Because the I. Phoenix. Yes, because like Maya Angelou says in her poem, you know, I still uh -huh. I rise. Uh, uh -huh. Life has buffeted me a lot of times, but I have risen again and again strongly, stronger oh, each time. Oh, so oh yes. Like yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Wow. Phoenix, a bird that yes. rises from its ashes. Lovely. Okay, do you Google yourself? Oh, you bet. Yes, I do. <laughs> good, good, good. And how do you feel when you, you know, read those rave reviews about your book? How does it feel? It feels good. It feels good. It is kind of like, you know, the good hormones flow into your body, you know. So uh, oxytocin and things, dopamine. <laughs> so it feels good to, you know, Google yourself and a long list comes out, you know. So you feel like, okay, not bad, right? So ah, it's good. But at the yeah. same time, Aparaj, this is not a part of rapid fire, of course, but I must <laughs> say that despite being, uh, you know, such a distinguished persona, you managed to keep yourself quite simple and uh, down to earth. How did you manage that? Because for some people, you know, it's like I'm the monarch of all I survey. <laughs> it's that kind of, you know, like added, I know so much and this and that. And then, you know, success gets into their head. So how did you manage to keep yourself so simple and down to earth? Uh, maybe I think it has to do with the uh, values and the ideology that my parents had instilled into me right from uh, childhood. You know, if you look at my CV, there is no two over there. There is all one, 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 one stood first in this, stood first in that. But yes. every time I used to stand first, my parents would tell me there is nothing to brag about. OK, fine. Ah. You st stood first, but you have to. Uh, you know, beat your own self later on. There's nothing to brag I'm about. I'm so it's glad like, they, they, they did so that. They, yeah. uh, so keeping me grounded was something that uh, they always used to do. And the other thing that I'm a believer in God, you know, I believe a lot in God. And I feel that there is some divine power. Our, uh, I feel my uh, abilities are, of course, limited. But there is a, a divine power up there who has been very kind to me. Yes. So I'm very thankful for that. And I always pray in my life that I never lose that divine hand from over my head because that has helped me wow. tide over a lot in life that has helped me see a lot of success see a lot of uh, dark times as well you know when yes. uh, there have been illnesses and sicknesses in the family um, and I have at times felt like the world is crushing around me but then there has been somebody up there who has been, you know, protecting me just like this. So I could come out of it. Still, I rise. You know, that's why the phoenix. Yes, that's why the phoenix. Mm -hmm. And you will always be under his awning, under, you know, his under it's his that. you know umbrella. So yes. um, and I'm, as I'm far so as learning, you're, you're, yes, as yes. far as learning, you know, I think there is no end to it. You know, There's so no how can it. you brag? How can you be arrogant? How can you ever think that you're True. the monarch of all you survey? Because there is so much, you, there is so much to know. You know, one yes. lifetime is so little. 
Yes, well, one lifetime is so little, and it was uh, I, uh, Isaac Newton, Sir Isaac Newton, who said that my knowledge is just like a drop in the ocean. Mm -hmm. So ocean. when you have a gigantic water body like an ocean, well, you just you know you just look yeah. like a mm -hmm. tiny droplet. So you're absolutely right, and that's what. It's very stupid. Up. It's very foolish to be a braggart. You know, it's very yes. foolish to be arrogant. Yes. It's very stupid to be True. arrogant. True. And I, I, I know that's the reason why your students uh, admire you so much, because uh, you have a lot of, you know, fan following amongst your students. I do read the comments, you know, love you, ma'am. <laughs> and, you know, they're, they're so yes. uh, uh, they're adorable. And uh, probably they not only admire your scholarship, they also admire your, you know, simplicity, you're approachable to them. And that's uh, something that uh, probably maybe, catches their pulse. Maybe. Uh, yeah. But I think that, you know, uh, they are, my students are a huge and enormous part of my life. And yeah. I always keep saying that they are the ones who keep me ticking, you know. Uh, yeah. um, I always feel that they are like the, you know, the flowing water. One batch comes uh, and then goes and then another yeah. batch comes and goes. They are like the flowing water. And I'm like the shore, you know, uh, that is witnessing that flowing of the water and in turn getting watered by that water so that my mind keeps green you know yes your mind so is, keeps green wow lovely very well said words very something. well pronounced yeah. but i think they'd be more effective if they are implemented well yes so our viewers must implement this okay so aprajita back to rapid fire a quick yeah. uh, question here a book that made you cry uh uh, there must be many, the but even yes, though, yes, if, yes. I'm if you have to, to if you uh, have you know, to name one book, book, which uh, which book gone would with you, the wind, would that be? gone with the wind, test of the double bills, expensive people by Joyce Carol Oates, test, test, yes, test, test. that's some yeah. the double bills, and in Bengali yes. books, you know, um, Opur Shongshar, uh, you know, all of Oporajito, all all those books are there, Bibuti so right, loads of them are there, loads of them. Okay, are there. okay. Uh, oh, Henry is the last leaf. You know that oh, always yes. makes me cry. Oh yes, oh yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, Aprajita, how did you look at Madame Bovary the, when she says that I am such an ugly child and you know it has naturalistic overtones? You know how did you read it? Wasn't it uh, shocking? <laughs> yes, uh, but I always felt that uh, uh, Madame Bovary. You know, I, I, I don't. I'm not very sure about the film version. You know, because mm -hmm. I'm always wary about the film versions when I see them because uh, many a times, you know, I have been a little disappointed by the uh, film version when I have uh, seen it. But I think she was a very misunderstood character, you know, a yeah. character th uh, that needed to be studied even more. She was much misunderstood character. I always, she always comes across to me as that. Misunderstood. Okay. All right. A book that made you laugh. Oh, three men in a boat, you know, by Jerome. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> that is pure and terrible. So nothing can beat that. Ah, so. All right. Okay. The most underappreciated book of yours? Of mine? Uh, yeah. The Brontes, The Sorority of Passion. That was the second book I wrote. And um, I think that has uh, not... Uh, that has not re uh, received the amount of viewership that my third book, which is on Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, has received, you know, and that book is uh, yes. having, um, you know, edition after edition. And the first book, uh, which is um, The Terrible Beauty, that also has edition after edition. But the Bron Bronte's The Sorority of Passion, my students do buy the book, that, but they only take out the portion, you know, they only read the portion on Wuthering Heights. That is what because I it have. is prescribed by the university. Yes, you know, and <laughs> they don't go to the rest of the book. But I yeah. wish they would read what I have talked about in the entire book, you know. Yes. So I really would because love them to I read think that the that. students cannot go beyond Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights when it comes to Bronte sisters, Villay, yes. Professor, yeah. everything yeah. gets uh, all of big that. Time. And Annie Bronte, Anne Bronte is even a I, she's a wonderful author, you know. And I have written and, about again more underrated, well. underrated, very underrated. Yeah. Very yeah, yeah, yeah. Very okay. Uh, your favorite book authored by you? The Terrible Beauty. The Terrible the Beauty. Terrible which is, beauty. Uh, terrible yes, beauty. it's a book on the Gothic. 
it's a beauty on the it's a book on the gothic Yeah. it's not uh, a syllabus uh, it probably won't be of much use to people who only want to stay in the syllabus academically yeah yes yeah. academically if you somebody wants to research on the gothic that will come into use yes yes correct um when it comes to rk narayan's movie guide and novel guide which one would you choose oh the book any time purnima ah. any time <laughs> and uh, though the film in itself is uh, good enough uh, but uh-huh. the characterization of raju and marco and also rosi uh, for that matter in the film do not really tally with what i imagine they, them to be inside my head you know because we've uh, read the book yes hmm. yes and that's uh-huh. why i felt that the uh, film sets the characters in very absolutist uh, binaries of good or bad yes you know, like watertight exactly right. compartments hmm. yeah. and the yeah. delicious aporia of the gray shades are kind of lost and that yes. is why i want to hold on to my own reading of the characters through the reading book. of the character and imagining the characters you know the yes. way author has imagined them for you rather than you know yes. the director yes. kind of delineating the character mm-hmm. all right uh your ardent desire during the pandemic ardent desire during the pandemic well um of all desires one big desire that i had in my entire life in my entire married life of 22 years was to stay together as a family you know because ever <laughs> since i have been married my husband has been in one place and i have been in another place with my daughter uh, so yes. we have gone our own ways been in our own places but the pandemic has ironically you know given us uh, that long awaited chance to be together all three of us as a family you know me megha and shubhashish all three yes. of us have been working or studying from home you know so yes it's been great yeah, so I, i just hope i just hope you know your ardent desire gets fulfilled aprajita and you get quality time with you know mega and shubhashish i'm sure Thank you know you. he hopes the same thing uh, i hope so uh, okay so um it, when you're together as family my last question here what what will you make you know shondesh rasgulla or mishti doy <laughs> what ah, would that be? now you are touching a very very you know uh, soft <laughs> soft point in a bengali mind you know we have all sorts of mishtis you know we have shondeshes yes. sweet, and sweet. during the lock yes during the lockdown and because i have mr google at my fingertips that's why you know i've learned to make a lot of mishtis like uh, we have pantuas like uh, what you called gulab jamun you know so we call yes. pantu we have paish we have rabri you know so i have learned to make all that and uh, you know of course we have the chai radda we always say cha khabo you know so we have the chai radda that is something that bengalis are kind of like born with it's in the blood of bengali ah, so all right i have made a note of that yes <laughs> lovely and i think uh, you know i wish your life is as sweet as you know mishti doy and all the bengali sweets uh, that are you know available in west bengal and uh, the ones you're capable of uh, cooking and sweetening the family so i just hope yeah. you get you know f- uh, that quality time with your family members aprajita it was a delight it was an absolute delight uh, in interacting with you you've been phenomenal thank you so much for coming on boggling conversations thank you so much thank you for that. inviting me purnima to this uh, lovely conversation uh, or rather a virtual adda as we bengali like say and, <laughs> yes yeah and you are such a bubbly chirpy person purnima your energy is absolutely infectious so thank you for spending <laughs> thank you time so with much. me i've loved it i've loved it Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much yeah. Aparajita and I'm sure we will have many more memorable programs and you know books together. So I- I'm so glad uh, this Oops. happened. Uh, my my dear viewers, I'm so glad you joined Boggling Conversations with me Dr. Purnima Kulkarni very soon I'll come up with yet another episode, yet another guest. Kindly view our Facebook page, press like. follow please subscribe to our youtube video and you know keep enjoying boggling conversations thank you so much good night thank you priya
Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.